Hey guys, it's Thomas. I'm uh, back and we're doing the Q&A. 400 questions, guys, come on. <laughs> I had to cut it down to uh, to 10 or 12. So we're gonna, I have them all here on my phone. Uh, very advanced notepad on my uh, my iPhone here. So uh, I wanna start with one because uh, this kept coming back. Uh, a lot of you guys want to know where I get my inspiration basically. And um, this is a super, que super question, first of all. It's uh, usually what I ask other composers or other artists that I'm interested in. Um, because I honestly don't know where it's coming from. It's just coming from somewhere, I guess. And, uh, you know, I could use the cliches and say, oh, it's my, you know, experience in life, falling in love, falling out of love, uh, meeting new people, seeing beautiful nature, you know, happiness, uh, sadness, all of this stuff. And sure, yeah, there's a big part of that. But I think the biggest inspiration source is, uh, the sense that the mind has no limits in a way you know that it's exciting every time you sit down and and you try to challenge your mind to see how far it can actually go if you just let it all flow naturally so it's really to me uh, um, a combination of those things I mentioned you guys you're an immense uh, source of inspiration for me, uh, motivation, and uh, uh, of course other artists. Um, but really, this this idea that there's something that I haven't tapped into yet, there's some combinations of uh, neurons circling about here that could lead to something good, and that's inspiring, you know. Uh, Alina Rossi wants to know what my process of creation is, and. Um, this is also a difficult question, but a good one because it's, it's a very strange one. It's basically just um, my routine is sitting down at the computer having uh, a banter with Cubase because uh, Cubase, I, we have a very difficult relationship with uh, Cubase and I. It's very dysfunctional. It's like um, I wake up in the morning, it's like a dog waiting there in the morning to be fed. And it's like all excited. And it's staring at you and uh, you know you just it's happy but happy to see you but it's like at the same time it's not it wants something from you you know and you just sit down and you're like oh, how did I do this last time you know and it's like I see lines on the screen I see uh, buttons that I already forgot what meant and uh, I start pushing things and you know all of a sudden okay well wait a minute it's coming back to me now Ah, right. So, so that's the beginning of it. You know, every morning it's daunting. You know, to be honest, I'm, I'm so tired of it. But I keep coming back for more torture. But you really, as an artist, you're at the mercy of your uh, your creative brain, you know? And if it's not happening, it's not happening. You just might as well just call it quits. Um, but yeah, that's my process, I would say. You know, beyond that, once you're in the actual composition process, it's it's more seamless I guess I just space out and I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing I'm just uh, it just gets done somehow uh, no food no water no breaks no phones I think that's the key Ben Theriak asks uh, how did you find or how do you find new approaches to music and avoid getting stuck in the same box well there is no box really I mean this box is just something we create right I mean, it might sound cliche, but it's actually true because, you know, there, the whole world is random. At least it seems very random to me. And um, you can put all these beautiful things together in any way you want. So already, you know, you're not limited. You are, you could basically take anything, any musical thing, any voice, any sound, you could put it together and mix it together and blend it together and and you know most of the time let's face it, it it'll sound pretty terrible but every now and then something comes out that, that makes sense that seems uh, in one way or another usable and you take that little thing and you store it somewhere whether it's on your hard drive or on your hard drive um, 
I think this is the key and just keep on storing all these ideas and whatever you come up with because you it might sound like I mean I think everybody's had this feeling where they're listening to a piece of music once and, and this piece of music is it does nothing to you right and then a couple of months later or a year later two years ten years later you listen to the same piece of music and you're like wait a minute this is awesome or you know why didn't I discover this why didn't I hear this the first time I listened to it and I think it's like that with all the ideas that you have too when you're sitting and you're trying to compose and or you're trying to draw something or you're trying to sing or whatever you're doing it might feel wrong at the time but it might actually be something really good so I think that's the way you think out of the box you don't limit yourself to this box that you're thinking about and you just save everything that you do and at some point you come back to it and you try to fit it into whatever you're doing Abigail Morgan wants to know what my favorite piece of music is and uh, what composers inspire me and I want to say I mean it's so difficult to pick you know because come on there are so many incredible composers so many incredible pieces of music that have been written but one that at least resonates a lot with me is uh, Samuel Barber's Violin Concerto, Second Movement. Uh, there's something magical about that one. Veronica Todorova says, uh, sometimes you use Bulgarian choir in your music. How did you discover this? And uh, yes, I do. And I love Bulgarian choir. I love the Bulgarian people and culture. It's incredible. This this choir this unique sound the first time i heard it i was like wow what is this this is something out of this world and it was crazy to me that i hadn't discovered it because i was older i was like in my 20s when i discovered it i think and i was just like why didn't anyone tell me about this because this is so beautiful why am i not listening to this when i'm younger you know and it just made me realize how much musical how many musical treasures there are in the world and how they are not necessarily being appreciated by as many people as they should be because they are simply not known um, you know it seems like in this world it's whatever is being promoted it's whatever is being sold and pushed aggressively this is what we consume and it's a shame because I think some of the most beautiful stuff out there lives in complete isolation from the world, from the rest of the world, oblivious to the rest of the world, as a gem inside a mountain that has yet to be excavated. Another question that a lot of people ask was, um, well, they want to see me working, right, in, in my studio, and they want to see me doing all the things that I do. And I use Cubase, and uh, I'm scared of Cubase. I'm really scared. I, we have a terrible relationship, Cubase and I. It's a dysfunctional, bipolar mess. Uh, every morning it's like, you know, staring me in the face, you know, like, try harder, because last time sucked. And, and I agree, you know, and I'm like, well, but you know, if you don't crash all the time, then maybe I get stuff done, you know? And I sit there and I we, we bicker a while. It's like a you know old married couple, I guess. But, uh, in the end, I love I love my tools. I love Cubase, and I love what I uh, what I do. So I make it work. You know, I guess that's what you do when you're up against a challenge like that. Fernando Laguno says, "I have been a fan for 12 years. Wow, 12, 12 years. That's insane. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thanks to everyone that are supporting me and following me. And uh, you're inspiring and you're motivating me." every day uh, you make me really try harder and it's, it means so much you have no idea fernando also wants to know how i do all my details in, in my music and uh, i appreciate the, that you've uh, discovered those it means uh, that you're paying attention i guess uh, these details they arise out of boredom i think uh, i just need to entertain myself with something while i'm composing and if you're repeating the same thing over and over, which you're doing when you're composing, uh, you tend to get bored. So I add all these elements to keep myself excited in the process. And also the way these things work is that you're writing music and a lot of times, like we 
talked about earlier, um, a lot of times you have ideas and you don't realize that they're good ideas at the time because you're not in the right mood or you just simply don't recognize the, the potential of this idea. So I save everything that I'm doing and I put them aside and then whenever I have something that takes me a little further in the composition, I let that idea drive me and then I come back to the ideas that I already saved and I try to work them in like sort of like a puzzle, a mental game, a brain challenge and this inevitably adds a lot of color, a lot of complexity, a lot of interesting elements and um, it's a mathematical piece at that point uh, which I quite enjoy doing and um, I guess it's just a, it's a natural part of the process for me. Gala Radova wants to know when I will have a concert in Ukraine. Um, and I just only recently realized that there are so many uh, people in Ukraine, in Belarus, in uh, Russia that appreciate my music. And um, I guess I will do this one in, in Russian, right? Всем привет, ребята! Честно, в принципе, я не знал, что у меня есть так много людей fans из Украины и, и России, и поэтому, но это будет очень-очень круто, я думаю. Мне очень нравится украинская и русская культура, люди, еда, борщ, и я надеюсь, что мы можем делать концерты скоро. Caleb Jablonski wants to know what the biggest complexity was when writing Humanity. And uh, the biggest complexity, the biggest thing I'm battling every time I'm, I'm doing something is just staying focused, you know? Not getting distracted by people around me, phones going off, uh, loud noises, TVs, all, I, I need to be in this isolated space. And not just for the half day that it takes to, you know, complete the thought. Um, just continuously for months and months and months. No sunshine, no people, no friends, no family, no food, no water. I mean, it's the only way to do it for me. And um, of course, that's a challenge because it's not a healthy way to live, but it's at the same time, it's the only way for me to get this done. Yeah, I guess that's the biggest challenge. I mean, the rest is just piecing everything together in the way that makes sense and in a way that's actually true to the format and style of, and, and theme and idea and um, concept of the entire um, series. So hopefully when you hear the last chapter and all the ones preceding it, you will see that I spent a lot of time trying to make everything fit together in a coherent mess. Okay, uh, last one, because it's getting, it's getting dark here. Uh, Jörg Leppard asks, did you work with Hans Zimmer and what did you learn? And yes, I did work with Hans. Uh, I had the privilege of working with Hans on one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and a few other things. Uh, but anyway, what I realized is that Hans works as hard as, as, as the hardest working person you'll ever know. And uh, when, you know, uh, everyone was gone, they were all gone for the day. Hans was still working and it's three, four, five a.m. in the morning and you do it because you need to. Um, you have to get it out. It's just, uh, there's no other option. And it tells you what it takes to become someone who's really at the top of their game. And it inspired me and I've been working so hard ever since. And I did before too. I was uh, not slacking off and I'm not slacking off now, even though I might appear to be doing so. <laughs> I'm getting right back into it. and. Uh, it's inspiring for everyone who, who has aspire to be um, good at something because it does not come easily. It does not come for free. You need to work for it. You need to work really hard for it too. Um, so yeah, such a privilege. Anyway, let's wrap it up because it's getting really, really dark here. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for submitting all the questions. I had a great time answering them. I hope you learned something new about me. I actually did, <laughs> I think. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, I know you're looking forward to chapter two and it's coming. I can't say when right now, but it is coming. Uh, so just uh, keep on checking that page and uh, thank you so much for your support. It means the world. Cheers.